world. Um, of course, I am Chris Berryman, the coalition builder and founder of Bringing Humanity Together. I have known his friend for a great number of years, and he's been a great friend and a great confidant, and he is really doing great work in the pillar of human development. And this is going to be a great and engaging conversation. Not only we can build connection, but create uh, engagement, create opportunity, and really build out that community one person at a time, one conversation at a time, and even one moment at a time. So I truly believe we're going to have a great and engaging conversation that really will open up our eyes and maybe see the opportunity that is there to really bring humanity together. And we're going to do that not only on this call, but on every time that we show up. Because I truly believe once we show up, not only can we stand out, but when we stand out, we can stand in and be together one moment at a time. So go ahead and take it away, Sven. So of course, thank you. So as I just started recording, I'm just going to very quickly repeat the first thought I did. So I asked the, all, all of us, um, what is something we missed in a training where somebody just talked had a big PowerPoint presentation, but basically just talked all the way through. Um, and the things that we shared with each other were missing were interaction, engagement, or somebody said, I learn best while doing diversity. Um, and I think that it's not just diversity in people, but diversity in knowledge, diversity in what we all can bring um, is connection. And I basically said, like, you have must have seen my framework. So I'm going to share this with you in a quick PowerPoint presentation for probably about 10, 15 minutes. And then we're going to go into a little bit of a discussion because, as I said, I want to learn from you as well as you learn from me. Are you ready? So I hope you can all see this. So as I said, I call this kind of the training propeller. And it's basically put me on three basic things. A training must be practical, it must be person-centered, and it needs to build community. And especially the community part, this building connection with each other is usually missing. It's something we just don't do very well in training and workshops. We don't bring people together. Um, but even in those other three things, I have found we could do better. So I have basically created each blade has three parts. So let's go for the practical side first. So one of the things that I want a training to be is transferable. Whatever I give you, I want you to be able to transfer this into another context. If I talk about conflict, I want you, even in a leadership event, I want to do it in a way that it actually makes sense to you to do the same thing with your partner at home. It's something, it's a basic skill. It's skill focused. I want you to learn something, learn a skill or a method. What I don't and what I try to avoid as much as possible is I avoid statistics. I avoid theoretical models. I don't talk a lot about loads of theoretical models and this is this model and that model and this person researcher says this and this person researcher says this. Because all the theory is only valid if we actually put it into action. So in a training, I try to avoid about talking about the theory. What I try to do is I talk about how we can action based on the theory. What are the actions that we can take? Because then I, I can relate to the people um, who are not as academic, who don't want to know everything. You know, the people who want to know the theory, let them seek it out. You know, they can do that. They can still go there and learn all the theory behind. But for most people, they don't want the theory. They don't need them. None of us needs the theory why a motor or an engine in a car works. We just want it to work. We drive the car without knowing all the theory why it works. Because we don't need it. And so is this with conflict resolution and all the other you know, things we have. We don't need to know the theory why it works or it doesn't. We need to know how it works. How, what can we do? So, yeah, make it transferable. Avoid theoretical models. Experiential is how does your training is an experience to the people? Okay. What 
are the learners experiencing? What I do very often is, instead of teaching a manager or leader, for instance, about how to manage people, I actually want them to experience to be managed. What's the difference that makes it to them as the participant and learner within the training? Because if they experience the difference it makes to do it in a different way, they're far more likely to put it into action the next time. Because they they were the first person who experienced it. They suddenly see like, oh, wow, yes, that's me. So for instance, I do emotional logic training. I teach people how to deal with unpleasant emotions. This is my main focus. And what I always do is I let people experience emotions and then we talk them through. So I'm not just you know, talking about how to deal with unpleasant emotions. I let you experience the emotion first and then we go through those things. So make it experiential and make it immersive. And what I'm talking about here is use a relevant story. And that story is not just a story to talk about. What I did with you at the very beginning is I made you a participant of an event in the, just asking you how was your experience when you are in a training event like this and this. I let you feel it. I let you be part of that story because then you have a chance to learn something. Okay? And that's what I very often do. I make people part of the story that I want them to experience. I'm not telling a story that's theoretical. I immerse them into it. Because again, it becomes an emotional learning. You feel it. You're part of it. You are in it. You begin to like, oh, I get that. So what I do with kind of the emotional logic stuff is like I often say to people, okay, guys, when you go to an event, you have an online ticket on your phone. You arrive at the parking lot. You're really happy. No traffic jam. Everything worked well. You can't wait to go to the event. You open the door of your car. Your phone falls into a puddle and it breaks. How would you feel? And then I start talking about how we un how we work with those unpleasant emotions that we experience. I make them part of the story. Okay, I'm not just telling, imagine somebody else. How do you think they would feel? We don't know. But if I make you feel, you change. So that's kind of the, the side of the practical. So make it transferable, make it experiential, and make it immersive. Let people be really part of your training program. So the next part is be person-centered. So what I mean here is be make it relatable. And what I find very important is to make it relatable to every individual. Think individual, not generalize because that's a very hard thing to do. We often create those things. Everybody experiences this. If you have a sentence like this in your heart, then I think like, hmm, probably not. <laughs> we all experience different. So we need to create training that is relatable to everyone in the room. And we need to avoid generalization. And that's unfortunately something that statistics always do. They always generalize. The second thing is make it developmental. Focus on character building. Help the people change from the inside out, not just from the outside in. Create something with them so they can grow inside out. And inspire continuous learning. And I think that is, for me, one of the main things. I want you to talk about it. I want you to talk with others about it and, and grow together, grow inside out. I don't want to tell you. I want to reach within and help you grow from the inside. That's kind of what I mean with creating something developmental. And the third one, make it transformative. What I mean here is, Again, this is where this practical side, the immersive side comes a lot in, is focus on mindset and heart set shifts. How people to shift from with their thinking from one place to another, and not just in their head, help them to shift their inner heart. 
to see things with a different eye. Okay, if we if we work all the time with the mind, we are so disconnected from the heart very often, and we we have this outside in approach. But if we can reach the heart and change here something and shift something in the heart, the whole mind shifts with it. And I've experienced this many times. I also focus on really creating an environment where people can have an open mind, an open heart, and an open will. Um, those three terms I took from Otto Sharma's Theory U um, from the Presencing Institute at the MIT. They speak about the importance of bringing shift and change. The most important thing is a place that they call presencing, which is you have an open heart, an open mind, and an open will. You're willing to think differently, you're willing to feel differently, and you're willing to actually do it differently. Any questions so far? Otherwise, I just carry on. So the third one is community building. And as I said, this is one of the things that we completely miss when we talk at people. Make it relational. And what I mean here is create a space where people can relate to each other. Okay, this is what we're going to do in a minute, you know, when, I, when we can discuss. We get to learn about each other and from each other. Um, I being, I'm one of the biggest believers in crowd knowledge. That's what I call it. You know, other call it collective wisdom, but I love this term crowd knowledge. We all know something. We all can learn something from each other. And if we bring people together and show them that we can do this, it creates something else. It makes this whole place supportive. People begin to experience that we can actually learn from each other without the trainer in the room. One of my goals is to make me invisible and actually not needed. I share so often with people, you can do this with each other. The knowledge has always been there. You just have to access it. You have to find the right people. Um, and, and have relationships with each other. And often those relationships are actually in the room. And then make it collaborative. What I mean here is let participants contribute. We often think like we know it all. We have all the research. We we come with the big theories and we say like, oh, we've done all the research. And how often I hear um, training where they said like, well, for the last 25 years, we've been researching this and we have this survey and this study and that study. And we know what it is. Yeah. I sometimes think like every research is only as good as the question you're asked to start with. Like in this thing that I was today, um, it was about conflict resolution. And they said, like, the first thing of the approach is focus on the facts. And I always say, like, in conflict, focus always on the people. Because I want to bring people together to bring connection. So my approach was completely invisible. The, the way I, how I often lead people to through conflict resolution was not at all part of this talk today because I couldn't contribute. I couldn't help. But I want us to bring things together and then be a teacher yourself. One of the reviews I received uh, last year on my LinkedIn profile was had a very specific point in it that really struck me. And that, that was that this person found it amazing that I would con continually validate people's contributions and make very clear that I just learned something new. That I say something like, I've never seen it like that. And the people felt like, oh, wow, this is like amazing. Um, so again, you know, we are teacher. Yes, we are, might be an expert in some area, but I always remember we are just in our own world. 
we only know our own world. If we open up to the worlds that are just coming into our meetings, we all learn from the others. It opens our minds. And, and therefore, the experience for everybody becomes an experience of learning. So that's it. That's kind of you know what I've created for me. Um, as I said, I've created PowerPoint, a, a PDF document, which kind of questions has questions in that you can go through. So we, we will, you will see similar things you've seen in the presentation. Um, so you can yourself experience some of those um, or go through your own training and say like, okay, I'd love to bring this in. How can I do this? Um, and remember, we can help each other. One of my clients, um, I started training with them in kind of 10 days. And as I said, I always left using stories and make them relevant. But in that case of this company, I couldn't think of something that was relevant, something everybody experienced, but um, but not too triggering. And I thought, like, oh, I can't find anything. So I just spoke to the person, to the organizational development manager. We just had a quick chat. And then she came up with something. I was like, that's it. I would have never thought about that environment even that she mentioned. But this was kind of, for me, an amazing situation.